so we are still in this um, why the church series and some of you may say why are we still in this series all this time because we're not going to leave it until we have great understanding of why we are who we are I, I, I believe if you turn this mic down I sound like I'm at United Center um, I believe with all that is going on in the world right now as you can see dark is getting darker it is time it is a great time for the church to shine look at your neighbor and say it's time for you to shine and I believe we have not been shining as we should because we've not had understanding of who we are and why God saved us and left us here he could have saved us and just took us on to glory but he left us here for a reason there's a reason that we are still in the earth realm. Say amen to that. Amen. He is the head and we are the body. We are the body of Christ. So if you are one of those people who are in this season of bashing um, um, the body, you're really bashing the head because we're connected. You can't bash the body without bashing the head. Are you listening to me? Um, um, and the heart is the seat of our understanding what did I just say now so your neighbor said the man ain't been talking but 30 seconds how you sleep already go ahead tell him it's, it's not a good time to go to sleep you wanted to go to sleep you should have went to sleep while the praise team was just singing that was a better time to go to sleep and they did real good but you don't go to sleep during the word it has the ability to save and change your soul. Say amen to that. Um, 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 the heart is the, you know, see that's why I can't get to keep going these tangents. Say I'm spirit. I'm spirit. Say but I live in the body. And it's okay to fix that body up sometimes. Tell them it's okay to beat that body. Go ahead, beat that body. You don't beat the body, you beat the face. Well Paul said he beat his body. He buffed his body. Okay, back to the lesson. Y'all got me. <laughs> see, Ephesians 4. You see what happens here? Oh my God. In order to be effective as God intended, we must understand our role in the marketplace. I'm going to teach you for 17 minutes. 17 minutes I have on marketplace anointing write that down marketplace anointing because too many of us hate our jobs too many of us run out of work on Friday you give them all a finger or until I see you on Monday because you feel like I'm just here wasting time and this job ain't gonna undo with my purpose or my calling that's on my life and I'd be glad when God rescued me out of here and, and get me on to serving in ministry so I can be a good use to the Lord and the kingdom of God. And God says, no, you got to learn how to marry your work and your ministry because they go together. When, when, when he said his mission is our mission, he says his mission is our mission. He, he told us then, he said, now go ye into the world. Notice he didn't say the church. He says, go into the world. Look, look at here and preach the gospel to every creature and make disciples in the world and we have been too busy trying to do everything inside the four walls or taking the four walls out to somebody's lot and singing out there and there's nothing wrong with that but God is calling you to be an anointed professional in the workplace he wants to marry your ministry and your work and you're anointed for it. So stop hating your job. Stop hating Monday morning. Stop dragging in there like I'm just so tired of being here and I can't stand this job. And if I can just find some else, I live here in the morning. Stop doing that because God has you on assignment. I don't care if you're at Aon or if you're at Liberty Mutual. I don't care if you're at McDonald's. I don't care if you're at a factory. God has you on assignment because we are ambassadors. I may help you with this part of the series. See, we have been too comfortable just inviting people to church and let the church do the work come to my church 
Let the church do the work. I come because y'all invite somebody to church and you say, Well, I hope the praise team seen that song today because I like that song. And I hope Pastor tell that joke because he's funny when he do that. Because I want I want my friends to really like my church and possibly join my church and possibly get saved in my church. And you got it all wrong. The church is not the place where the majority of the harvest should be saved. I know that goes against um, 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 traditional teaching. We've been taught bring them to church, have an altar call, and everybody flood the altar and lift their right hands. And no, nothing wrong with that. But the great harvest should be coming to God in the workplace, in the marketplace. Jesus had a marketplace anointing. He had a marketplace ministry. He went to the synagogue once a week and then he was in the marketplace. If you look throughout the scripture, all of his healings were in the marketplace. When he taught, it was in the marketplace. He found his disciples in the marketplace. And we're trying to become the next deacon. You do know everybody didn't call to be no deacon, missionary. He said, I gave some. Go to Ephesians 4. I'm, I'm ahead of myself. Because y'all, 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 y'all done, y'all done went prophet crazy in this season. And everybody's prophetical, you know. <laughs> you get your broke, busted, prophetical self and get in the word. It's not even the word prophetical. It's pro- Prophetic. Okay, whatever. And he gave some, verse 11, he gave some apostles, says some. Are y'all reading this? Come on, and he gave some apostles and I need everybody to read it. Put on your good father day voice. I I know I was headed in my notes and I started flowing with that. Before I go on with this scripture, I want my man of God to stand up. This is my daddy. This stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. him. I am who I am because of this man of God. Come on, celebrate my daddy. Thank you. Love you, dad, and I I bought you something. I'll give it to you later. Let's read it. Ready? Verse 11. Come on, I got 12 minutes. Work with me. Go and read. And he gave apostles. And 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 what what does some mean because now we live in a day where everybody's an apostle pastor teacher and there's no regular lay there's no regular lay people in the workforce everybody just you know ministry you see for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So the local church has its place. These five um, um, fold ministry gifts um, come together in the local church to um, create a place of spiritual edification. Um, believers are taught the word. Um, they're strengthened. They're equipped. They're discipled. They're matured and they're prepared for the world. Um, 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 you come in here to get ready for the world. Wasn't that a song back in the day, Ready for the World? That was a group. Actually, they said, are you ready for the world? And if you would be honest, most of you are not. Because in order for you to be ready for the world, you got to first go through the process of him bringing you out of to see you back in tune. She just said you walk in power, but you got to be cleansed. Yeah. You got to get the world off of you, the, the, the very residue, the very smell of the world. And it's okay when you first come to the kingdom for you to still smell like the world. But you should not be in here, in, a, in, the, in, in, in the word, living in the word, hearing the word, um, doing the word, and still smell like the world 10 years later, 5 years later, 15 years later. It shouldn't be. Because God is bringing you to a place to make you ready to go back in. So he can now trust you. Come on, and, 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 and listen, you, as long as you're in this body, you're going to trip up on something. Come on, Steve, Stephen Curry, you're going to trip up on something. He is a believer. But when the pressure was on, you know what came out of him? What came out of you when the pressure hit you? You just wasn't on Channel 7, that's all, but some came out. Come on, come on, are you still with me? Go, go to John chapter 3. 
Jesus was anointed for the world. Verse 16. That's right, baby. The baby's even saying amen. I just love this church. And if I wasn't a member, I would join. I would join today, Jason. I would cut. I would say, what must I do? Okay, so for God so loved the world that he gave. Um, read this too. I want you to read this too because I know we read this out of tradition. Ready? Read. For God so loved the world. Love who? The world. Who? The world. Who's in the world? I said, who's in the world? That lady, you don't understand with that red dot on her head and that side shown, she's in the world. And you may be sitting next to her in your cubicle and you're talking about how she smells and you don't understand her and I don't want to deal with her. But he loved the world. And if his mission is your mission, you got to love him too. You don't decide who you're going to love. You don't get to decide who you're going to love. Let me just stop right there. Believers don't get to decide who they're going to love. That's heavy. You don't get to choose who you're going to love. I'm going to go to this side. You can tell I ain't preaching two weeks. I'm excited. I wish I had more time. I'll lay it all on you. I'm going to say it over here. You don't get to choose who you're going to love. She didn't got on my nerve. I'm through with her. I ain't dealing with her. My boss gets on my nerve. I'm just sick. I need to check. I ain't dealing with these people. You don't get to choose that. Because that boss that gets on your nerve, that you act like you think she or he is against you, and they doing this, and called you in office, and give you more work, that's who you've been assigned to. And you keep trying to switch jobs. You're on your fifth job in one month. Because you keep running from those you've been assigned to. So God so loved who? That he gave his only begotten son. Read that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Look at verse 17. For God read to condemn but that the that the world through who? How is the world going to be saved through him? Because he gone. So how is the world going to be saved through him? How? Talk back to me. Through us. Through us. Through us. us. Now, uh, is the world going to be saved through us in here? Because this ain't the first stop. The second stop. Once you get them saved and start discipling them, say, come on down with me to the local church. And they'll come. This ain't the first stop. Second stop. This ain't the first stop. It's the second stop. Now, this, this is why I'm a label with this, Jason. I don't care if I preach it until 2039. I'm going to stay right here until fruit comes from this message. This is the message of the kingdom. We got to get this. We got it. We've been talking about this for now about three, four months, Pastor Terrence. You've been teaching on Wednesday night, and some folks still ain't said nothing to nobody about Jesus. So do we switch series? Absolutely not. Be going to stay right here. This is the will of God. And I ain't talking about you doing it so you can put something on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Ain't nobody thinking about that. I don't care if nobody knows you got somebody saved at the laundromat. He knows. He knows you're fulfilling his mission. This ain't no game. And we ain't giving you no cookie for every soul you bring in and no, no water. We ain't giving you that. It's your duty to win souls. Say amen. amen. And you are anointed for it. Say, I'm anointed. I'm go, 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 go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I have five minutes. I'm going to use all five of them. I sure am. Your anointing is not just limited to the local church. Jason Mitchell comes up here and sings. Brother Rayshon comes up here and sings. Sister Kelly sings. All the people at the mic, they sing. They're anointed to sing. Um, um, Brother Rayshon just wore us out. This, he wore us clean out this morning. That's a grace that's on his life. When Jason does, it's a grace on his life. Kelly prayed yesterday at the end like somebody had lost their mind. She said, shake your soul. It's a grace on her life. Yeah, we went in prayer and tried to class said, 
that? He said, she got a word. Taryn walked over here and she got the mic and she said, wake up! Yeah. And y'all woke up because it's a grace and she's anointed to do it. But that anointing is not just limited to inside the four walls when you preach and sing and pray and, and all that stuff. When you go to work, I don't care if you're a secretary, you be the best secretary there because the anointing of the Holy Ghost rests upon you and when other folk can't get it done in three days, you You're a photographer, whether you, you sell insurance, regardless of what it is that you do, you're anointed to do it in the workplace. So stop comparing yourself with the platform. As a matter of fact, it's more responsibility on those that are on this platform. At least you ought to take it that way. And the same way I wouldn't go up here on this platform without being prepared, you shouldn't go to work without being prepared. You get up every morning and you pray in the Holy Ghost because I'm going down here to sell this insurance. And I thank God that my quota will be met and I ain't going to be trying to put nothing together by the 30th. I'll meet it by the 15th because I'm anointed to do it. What is the anointing? Write this down. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. The anointing is the spirit of God on you. Write it down. It is supernatural ability of God, which means you can operate above the natural. I said you can operate above the natural. It is an empowerment to prosper. Woo-wee! And they would give me work sometimes, torn. And I know in the natural, I can't get this done by the deadline. I just know when you hand it to me, I can't get it done. It ain't going to happen. But you got to switch over into the supernatural and tap into your supernatural ability because you're anointed for it. Je this, this ain't just me making up something. Jesus was anointed. He was a carpenter. He won prophet Jesus. He won reverend Jesus. He won pastor Jesus. He was known as a carpenter. And because he was known, that means he did his job well. Yeah. Yeah. He put the couch together or the, put the cupboards together, that kind of thing. He did that. He had a job. Why, why is having a job for believers a bad word? Jesus had a job. The anointing. It is the ability to operate outside of the natural realm. And you are anointed <laughs> to operate in this world system without this system influencing and tainting you. I'll say that that didn't go over too well. Because we think in order to operate in the system, we got to become like the system. I don't know if y'all realize this or not, but people are looking for and waiting for the sons of God. They waiting on you. When you sit next to somebody in the cubicle and they having a Monday morning fit and can't find their coffee card and things are going crazy and they had a horrible weekend and they forgot they didn't turn this in for they left on Friday and they sitting there losing their mind how about you go over in that cubicle and say hey cause peace rests on you I didn't say go over there and lay hands throw oil in the cubicle I didn't say to do that but you can walk over there and just put your hand on them and say it's going to be alright and they can sense the peace of God cause you're anointed for the workplace you're anointed for the workplace. You are anointed for trouble. And we have thought the anointing only works in church. So we talk about how anointed the singer was. And how no girl, she's anointed. Oh, and he sure did preach. Oh, and that oil, she oiled up. He, oh, he got some oil on him. Oh, he got relationship. Oh, he, he been with the father. Same thing for you at your job. You work with children. Oh, you better be anointed to work with children. You're going to lose part of your mind Monday and the rest of it on Tuesday. You've got to be in order to work with children. You drive a bus, 
Come on, you drive Uber, I don't care if it's black Uber, white Uber, executive Uber, you got to be anointed to do it. Yes. You got to be anointed to drive. Yes. Yes. You ever rode with somebody that can't drive? Yes. They ain't anointed to drive. If, if you work in your brake from the passenger seat, they ain't you. <laughs> and you keep clutching your pearls through the whole ride. Oh, oh, oh. They don't have an anointing. But you can get in the car with somebody and you can tell they're anointed. And they'll get you where you got to go in record time because they're anointed to do this. They know how to go in and out of traffic and they know the back way. They know how to do it. Are you listening to me? I don't, I'm, and I'm out of time. Who said that? Who's, I like, who said that? I, I, see, I like them kind of members. Ooh, and you wearing that headpiece too? Look at that headpiece. Come on here. Now she said I could take five more minutes. Can I have five more minutes? Yeah. I'm going to take five because I got to go eat. I do. I got to eat. <laughs> Terry Nebby said, stop hating your job. Stop hating your job. God cares as much about Monday as he does Sunday. That don't mean don't come to church on Sunday. Because here's where you get equipped to deal with Monday. Are you listening to me? Go, when I tell you to turn, I, I got to use these minutes wisely. Okay, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 18. And all of this is a gift from God in the New Living Translation. I'll be finishing four minutes. Who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's what? Ambassadors. Ambassadors. And God is making his appeal through who? Us. Through us. And we speak for Christ, the anointed one in his anointing, when we plead, come back to God. He's making his appeal through us in the world, not in the church. In the world. The church, write this down. I, I think I have it for the screen. The church is called to influence, yes, up here, the mountains of authority and power in the earth. Write that down if you can. The church is called to influence the mountains of authority and power in the earth they're called to affect to sway to change look 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 to impact to win over to guide now here's the thing i would guide in my job but they ain't gave me the position you got to learn how to walk in the position before they give it to you You go in that meeting, I don't care if you're the boss or who you, I don't care if you're the, I don't care if you're the office assistant. I started working, I was an office assistant, which means I, I spent all of my time in the file room filing papers. Out of eight hours, I was in the file room, at least six and a half of those. I, I, didn't, I didn't see the floor or the desk or the cubicle. I, I was in there filing papers with the AM radio. But when they had the staff meeting, because I am staff, I had to go to the staff meeting. Y'all got to catch this. And I don't care if you're the janitor or the office assistant, when they sit you at the table with all of the other people, that ain't the time to sit there and act like I'm just the office assistant. That's the time to let the anointing that rests on your life, the wisdom and understanding and knowledge to flow out of you at the table. And they said, wait a minute, we got to get you out of this file room because you got the goods. Yeah. I said, y'all going to sleep. Y'all ain't even ready, y'all. So I would make sure, Stacy, when they had these meetings, I went in there ready, Jack. 
So when they present different problems, because you can't solve problems on the level they were created, but because I'm anointed up with the Holy Ghost and I can see all things, the Bible says you have an unction from the Holy Ghost and you know everything, I begin to give answers in the staff meeting. The office assistant will begin to give answers in the staff meeting. Which now turns attention to you. Which now gives you influence. You say, who is this guy here? Who hired him? What department he from? And they may not give you credit at the table. But they'll go back over their lunch. While they outside smoking their squared breaks. What do you hear what he said? That do make sense. He, he um <laughs> And that's why you can't be at work complaining and murmuring and bickering and hanging out with those that do. I said something right there. Y'all going to lunch to have a beat up the boss day? I ain't going with y'all. Y'all going to talk about what y'all don't like and what y'all going to do and you finna quit and you put up vacation. I ain't finna sit with y'all. I learned a lesson in the hallway. I was at lunch one time downtown. Big old nice job, big old nice building. And we in, I'm in there at lunch with, with some of the church folk. You know, that's sometimes a mistake too. We're going to hang with the church folk at work. So I'm in there with the church folk at work. We in there having lunch in one of the, the nice plush um, attorney conference rooms. We let us have lunch in there. We having lunch. And these ninjas start fighting in the lunch room, in the, in the conference room. They in there pushing chairs and, and, and pushing files and stuff. And I'm sitting there like, oh my God. Here's what the Lord said. I told you not to bring yourself in here. Because some of y'all are too afraid to go alone. And they got to pushing them chairs. I was the first one out of there, Jack. I ran. I grabbed my sandwich and my mustard pack and I was out of there, Jack. I went not <laughs> Like I had never been in there. Went to my cubicle and started eating my lunch like I was in my cubicle the whole time. But then somebody told on me, Jack. So I asked him what happened. He was in there. I said, oh, man. Because you do know. You could have been there praying in the Holy Ghost, but now you all associate. Because you was in there with them. Now you all looked at the same. I said, Lord, get me out of this one. And he did. I left them ninjas where they was. Come on here. What was I saying before that? Oh, that's scripture. I'm out of time though, y'all. I'm out of time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what you're called to do. And I'll tell you this next week. Write, write this down and I'm, I'm going to sit down. This, this is what we're going to influence. Pastor Keisha, we're going to influence this. We're going to influence uh, uh, in, the, in these seven areas. It's this your marketplace anointed. I'm going to prove to you next week. You ain't got to just be in the church. In business, Come on, is it on the screen somewhere? In government? You got it? In media? Arts and entertainment. But God got to be able to trust you once you get over that now. See, I believe Fantasia is anointed of the Holy Ghost. She just won't yield to it. Education? Everybody came in on Deacon, we need some teachers. We need some anointed teachers to deal with these children that's coming out of these homes that ain't nobody never dealt with. You, listen, you got to be anointed in the area of education. Because it ain't just like open the door as kids come sit down, here's your spelling work. You got kids coming in that's been abused, that ain't showered in days, that ain't eight, they don't know their mama, they don't know their daddy, and they come and sit in your classroom and you try to teach them how to read, you got to be anointed to deal with that. Family and religion. And I am out of time, but I promise you I'll pick it up next Sunday. Will you come back? Yes. I said, will you come back? Yes. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Good to see you, Valerie. Are oh, you sitting way back there in the back, Marquise? You come up sit in the front, man. Hold your neighbor's hand. Don't talk, just stand up and hold a hand. Nobody moving. I 
believe by the Spirit of God that this series, I believe we're getting it, Jay, but because we have been so long in the same position of not moving in these areas, it's taken us a while to kick, kick in. No longer with that. You got to just go right at it. H how many of you in this room, drop the hand for just a minute, are in full-time ministry? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. The, by show of hands, that means we got to dig deeper with this message because you missed part of what I just said. Because based on what I just told, everybody in here is in full-time ministry. See, I, we gotta have, there must be a paradigm shift. You got to stop thinking as ministry as that's pastor, he work at the church, that's a musician, he play at the church. They're in ministry, they work in ministry, they work for the church. We are the church. And God left us all with a mission. And he didn't say sometime when you feel like it, Preach the gospel. Make disciples. That is our full-time assignment. I'll ask you again. How many in this room, based on what I just taught today, is in full-time ministry? <laughs> Thank you.